In this video, I'm going to configure a side-to-side -side VPI VPN connection from a Ubiquiti HMX device, in this case an Edgerider X, to a Juniper SRX. And I'm going to use virtual tunnel interfaces on the Juniper and on the Edgerider. So I have a very simple network here. The external interface on the Juniper is FE0 with the 11001 address and the ETH0 address on the edge router is sitting at 2001. They both have a default gateway going out to my simulated internet over here, and over that I am going to establish a VTI tunnel. So the address for the tunnel interfaces, they're both in the 12000-30 subnet range, and the tunnel interfaces on the Juniper are called ST, and the uh, tunnel interfaces on an edge router are called VTI. So I'm both using number zero here. I have an internal network range on the edge router side in the 10 range and a 172.16 range on the Juniper side. So these will be uh, the destinations or the sources that will establish the traffic and will actually go over these tunnels. And I'm going to do that with static routing. I have another video that focuses more on using a dynamic routing protocol, namely OSBF and RIP, to go over these tunnels. So that is the main advantage of using these VTI uh, tunnel interfaces over using remote and local subnets because if we have a lot of subnets on this side and a lot of subnets on that side we have to add a lot of entries if we just run a routing protocol such as ospf then uh, we have a lot less entries and even with static routes we can just set a static route for everything in the 10 range pointed to this interface from the juniper's perspective so i'm going to show you how to configure that so i have a ike and a esp uh, hashing and encryption settings here. I go over more detail in this in my other VTI VPN videos, but basically these are the defaults of the edge router when you configure it uh, using the GUI, uh, mainly the lifetime of 28800 for Ike and 3600 for ESP. So that's what I'm gonna match on the Juniper side. So let's get started on the configuration. I'm gonna use this to CLI for this. I have another video that focuses more on the GUI and I'm gonna start on the edge router. So let's get started. So this is basically my basic setup. I've already configured these interfaces. So I have 2001 on this side and I should be able to reach the Juniper on the other side of the connection with the 1001. And here you can see my static default route to my gateway. On the SRX side, I have two interfaces, 1001 and the 17216 interface. And of course I can ping the edge router on the other side as well. So that's my basic connectivity. And let's get started on the configuration. So this part's already done, so I'm gonna move over to the VTI interfaces. So the first thing, oh, let me go to the actually the uh, edge router configuration. So this part is already done. I've already set up static route and interfaces, so let's go over to the VTI interface. So I'm gonna go in configuration mode, and I'm gonna create a VTI interface called VTI0 with the address and the MTU settings over here. So you can play around with these MTU settings. This is just basically one I found that was working. And I'm gonna create a static route to uh, 172 network to the next up 12001. So you can use either this command or you can use this command. It's basically accomplishes the same thing, but this command we just push everything from the 172.17 network, 16 network to this next hop interface, the tunnel interface. And because this is a point to point interface, we can easily do that. However, in this case, I'm gonna just use the regular static route command, but both are equally fine. So I'm gonna create my tunnel interface. So I have a edit VPN IPSEC, and under this level, I'm gonna create my Ike settings. So I name my Ike group Ike, I have my lifetime, my Diffie Helm group 14, AS128, hash MD5. I have my ESP group here, 3600 seconds. Again, AS128, MD5 hash. So these AES settings do not necessarily have to match up, but in this case, they do. I'm gonna disable PFS. So because I found that it, it works better with PFS disabled, you might have more luck uh, configuring this with an SRX on the other side and enabling PFS. But in this example, I just decided to disable it. I have my ESP group mode tunnels, which is a default, and I'm gonna set my peer to 1001, which is the address of the Juniper. My authentication mode is pre-shared secret, my password string password, I have description, connection type initiate, and the local address is the external address of the Ubiquiti device. And I'm gonna bind this I group to the uh, I group over here. So that's just a name, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to match on both sides. And then I have my set VTI bind uh, to VTI zero with the ESP group, which again matches to ESP. So normally if you configure a, a local and remote subnet, you will have like set interface, uh, set tunnel one, 
local subnet 10 and remote subnet 172. But in this case, this gets replaced by this VTI configuration. So this is basically the only part that's different and we create our interface over here. So let me paste this in and we should basically be done with this side of the configuration. And I forgot to take out this part because I wanted to make uh, sure that I can, I show you what the added VPN IPSEC that is under the added VPN. So if I take this out, I can actually paste it in one go. So apologies. There we go. And if I do a show compare, I can see that my configuration applied just fine. So we have our VTI, we have our static routes and we have our VPN configuration. So once I commit this, the edge router side is done. I'm going to replace this configuration back to make it easier to understand. So these are basically just two configuration sections. So if I go to my, uh, let me replace, replace my route over here as well. So all of my config files are in the description if you're interested. And now we can start with the Azurex side of the configuration. So the Azurex, it basically matches whatever we have on the uh, edge router side. So again, I've already configured my interfaces here and I'm gonna create a VTI interface. So unlike in edge router, it's called SD0, but the base uh, concept applies. We also have our MTU settings, we have our address, routing options, static route, which matches this part. So that's pretty much the same thing. And under the edit security Ike, or I should say edit security, we have the rest of the configuration. So we have a proposal called Ike, and under this proposal, we have our authentication method pre-shared keys, which matches with what we have here. We have our Diffie Helm group 14, authentication mode MD5, AES128 again, 28800 again. So this is basically all the phase one stuff, which matches what we have here. Then we have our Ike policy. We have main mode or aggressive. So I'd leave this at the default main mode, and we link this to our proposal Ike. I have my Ike policy pre-shared key, and again, we have our password string, which matches what we have here. We have our Ike gateway. So these are just names that I put in, but you can put in whatever you want. You can put in the name of the edge router or something, or gateway to edge router, whatever you want to put in. But the main thing is that we link this Ike policy to uh, this gateway to this policy, and we link the policy to the Ike proposal. That's basically how that works. So this links to that, and that links to that. We have our uh, address 2001, so that's the remote address, and we have a local address of the external interface. And again, we have the external interface command FE000. So this is what actually establishes the tunnel and the traffic will flow over the uh, SD0 tunnel interface. The, the VTI or the Ike settings are not initiated from the tunnel interface. That's the main difference. So we have an IPSEC proposal called ESP. So it's basically the same as what we have here, our, our ESP group ESP. We have again MD5 and AES, and we have our lifetime of 3600 seconds. Then we bind this to the uh, SD0 interface, which is basically the same as what we have here. We link this to the gateway of the I gateway and our ESP policy. And then we can say establish tolerance immediately, auto, or the other option is establish on traffic. So I wanted to have them tunnels up all the time. So let me go to my SRX and start putting this in. So configuration mode. And let me put in my interfaces one at a time. And then the edit routing option for the static route. Go back to the top and then we can edit in or paste in our security settings. So if I hadn't, haven't made any mistakes, then this should paste in just fine. There we go. And the last part, because this is an Azrax, it is a firewall. We have to apply a security setting to our interfaces. So I just decided to put this interface in the trust zone. You might want to create another zone for this, whatever you want, like VPN zone or something. And then you have to create a policy from VPN zone to zone trust and trust to VPN zone and allow whatever kind of traffic you want to allow. But because I am very lazy, I'm just going to put it in the trust zone. And then we have a policy trust to trust, which basically allows everything. So if I do a show compare, I can see everything that will get put in the configuration and I can commit this and my tunnels will be established and my routing is established. So everything should be working just fine and I will be able to test the configuration. So I have a PC sitting on this side, which I already peed into, which is this one. If it establishes uh, after my Wi-Fi will uh, establish and I have my PC on this side. So if I open up my PowerShell, I should see uh, I will be able to ping the 172.16.0 
tan address from this side or once the tunnel establishes one moment so the commit complete and i have my edge router here so the way to verify this if i go to show vpn ipsec sa that is the command on the edge router to verify if this tunnel is up and we can see that our state is established we have our local and remote endpoints the encryption and hashing settings that we have created and it is established seven seconds ago and it will re-authenticate in that many seconds and over here we can see how many how much traffic is actually going over these tunnels so if i ping again i can see that my ping is working so i just pinged this like one second before i i uh, the tunnels were up that's why it failed so we can see that our pings are now replying and if i do a trace route to tracer d 172.16.0.10 my pc on the other side i can see that it is actually going over the tunnel interface and it's arriving on the other side so hopefully I have my RDP session up. Let me create another one. One moment. So I have my RDP settings. Oh, it didn't actually seem to work. Okay. Then let me create another remote desktop connection at 172.16.0.10. And then show options. Let me set the display to something lower. And my password. And let me drag this in here. So I've established my remote desktop connection to my uh, laptop on the other side. And you can see that this is sitting on the 172.16.0.10 address. And I will be able, of course, to ping my uh, device on the other side of the connection. So you see that it's working just fine. Obviously, it's working just fine. Otherwise, I would not be able to RDP through the firewall connection and uh, ping myself back, basically. And of course, if I do a trace route to 10.0.0.10, I will see that it's going to the default gateway and then over the tunnel to the other side. So this is the main command that you want to use to verify the IPSEC configuration on the edge router. If you want to show the log, you can do show VPN log and you'll get more information if this tunnel has established or more importantly, if it fails to establish. If I go to my SRX and I exit out of here, I can do a show uh, security Ike uh, as a, and I'll get the state for up over here, which is what we want to see main mode the remote address over here and the other useful command let me look over here is the show uh, ike security associations details so we have more information about this like the authentication aes algorithms that we are using uh, the time it expires so this is all for phase one and these are the commands for phase two so we can have we have four tunnels basically and we have our ipsec as a detail which also gives us more information and this is also a very handy command the statistics we can see exactly how much traffic is going over these tunnels so you see we have a lot of packets going over the tunnel because i initiated that rdp setting uh, session a little bit earlier on so that's basically how you set it up it's not that complicated you just have to remember to apply it to the right security zones on the juniper side and like I said before, in the description is a link to all of my config files. I hope this has been informative. Thank you.